I'm visiting here today with Stephen Cups. He is the head of business development for Ellipsis Health. Yes. Welcome to today's show. Thank you so much for having me. So, Stephen, I'd like to hear the background of how you got to the position that you're in today. What led yeah. you up to this? And uh... Yeah, well, I think for behavioral health has always been a passion of mine. Um, if you think about uh, the, the entire ecosystem and in healthcare, it's really the biggest unmet challenge today. And so what we're doing at Ellipsis is we're harnessing the power of voice. What, what we're using right now to uh, communicate and our algorithms turn that into a scalable, consistent vital sign uh, for depression and anxiety. That's a big area, depression and anxiety. Yeah. Um, how did you guys, how do you differentiate yourself? Yeah, of course. From, from others in this world, because there's a lot of uh, growing need for that area in whole. Completely. Well, the, the story of um, the, the company is uh, my CEO, Manuel Mondal, and his co-founder, uh, Dr. Mike Aratow, were hanging out in a hospital and what they noticed was voices everywhere. Every doctor today uses voice. That, that's how you communicate you know, how you're feeling, what's wrong with you, um, all these different pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Similarly, yeah. it's what we do whenever we talk with any loved ones. You, know, you, you pick up the phone and you can immediately tell uh, how your loved one is doing. But for all of that rich information, it was only being captured analog. It's only what the doctor is hearing and what they choose to write down. And we knew that there was a huge amount of signal and information. Uh, so we decided to move into that space. And why depression and anxiety? The, the reason why is because it's one of the biggest disease burdens uh, in the world. Uh, if you look across the US, about 8% of individuals have a major depressive disorder in any given year. And if you add in anxiety, you get close to 20% of the population. But you know, for cardiovascular disease, we have a blood pressure cuff. For diabetes, we have blood sugar readings, but we don't have anything for depression or anxiety. Uh, and so we, we saw that need and we saw that the technology uh, was coming along. So uh, we decided to move into that space. Can you pinpoint the cause of depression and anxiety? statistically to say it's, it's primarily caused by this? Is it chemical imbalance? Is it uh, levels of uncertainty in the world we live today? Yeah. What What is a typical patient like that you're yeah. trying to, clinical patient you're trying to address? Yeah, and the, the you know, the the thing with depression and anxiety, right? It, it's a disease. It, it's a, a imbalance within the brain. Um, and that's one thing we, you asked earlier on, on how we differentiate ourselves we're not looking at mood. We're not looking at happiness, sadness, anger. We're looking at clinical depression and clinical anxiety. Okay. Um, and there are features of speech uh, that come into play. So uh, for example, um, with uh, depression and anxiety, uh, individuals who are depressed will use I and me more often than individuals who don't. Uh, and speech is just beautiful because it's one of the most complex uh, systems that we have in the human body, and it's immensely conserved um, across populations. So speech is what makes us human. I, everyone um, who doesn't have a terrible disability um, has speech on some way of being able to communicate. Um, and, and it's something that actually contributed to how we evolved into Homo sapiens. So when we're looking at speech and then I, I want to try to pinpoint your process here mm -hmm. is it you know for for what you do is a lot of speech therapy or is it medications yeah. what is your process yeah yeah that, that's a great question so the the first piece of that process is how do we get the speech it's actually very easy it's very similar to uh what you and i are doing today so okay. we we have a system uh, and it asks whether on an app or a computer uh, we ask the patient and user questions how's your day mm -hmm. how are things at home how are things at work mm -hmm. we want people to open up and kind of wear themselves on their sleeves when they're talking to our system 
they do. We, we only need two and a half to three minutes of speech. On average, people speak to our system for eight minutes. Um, and, and once we get that, uh, we, we run it through our algorithms to get that consistent vital sign. Now, how do doctors and everyone else use it? Uh, we use it to close two really big gaps in healthcare. You know, the, the big question that I always think about is, in the US for behavioral health conditions, it's 11 years on average between onset of symptoms and the individual actually gained treatment. Why is that? It's not that we don't have effective treatments, it's that we don't have a good, consistent, scalable way to identify people who are at risk, and we don't have any feedback for doctors, so that if you're a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a general practitioner, and you want to know how your patient's doing, you know, for a diabetic, you have blood sugar, but for depression right now, you don't have anything. So our uh, clients are rolling this out in two ways. The first is that upfront screening part. So our vision is just like uh, every time you go into a doctor's office, you get a blood pressure reading, you will also get a depression and anxiety screen through ellipsis. Similarly, if you're under treatment uh, or at severe risk, think about a woman who's just given birth or a individual who's just uh, had a severe surgery. Um, and we, we know statistically that those individuals are at risk, right? If they were at risk for heart disease, you'd measure their blood pressure on a weekly basis. So what you do with them is you uh, have them speak to our system on a weekly basis so that their care team can understand how they're doing and step in early before it becomes a crisis. Do you have, uh, a, in, in this solution, are you looking at a technology and automation or is it always going to be a human touch where they... They, they come, they, they talk, and then the, the, the communication is then analyzed. To yeah, how they yeah that, that's a great question. Um, we're, we're starting to experiment more into that space. So, so there are a few yeah. things kind of in the hopper uh, okay. that, that will be coming out uh, later this year. Um, but the one thing that we really believe in is healthcare across the U.S. is different, Yeah. right? Uh, there is no one-size-fits-all. And so what we always do with our organizations, whether it's a national insurer or a local hospital system, is understand what's the right workflow for them. Because if it doesn't fit into the workflow, it's going to get rejected. And so we, we've had you know, very large insurers say, how can we uh, use this to better direct people to the right resources, whether that's in-person, telehealth, digital coaching, uh, there is a wide variety of new interactions. Similarly, we've talked with uh, individual providers who are thinking about how do I use this to better understand uh, who is the most at risk and who um, is actually doing pretty well. How does a person learn more about you or find you if, if they want to inquire and in yeah, using your yep, services? Yep. So uh, we, we uh, can be found uh, online. Uh, that, that's kind of our portal. We, we've started... Um, kind of leaving uh, stealth mode uh, earlier this year. Uh, they can also reach out to me. Uh, okay. My email is steven, S-T-E-V-N, at ellipsishealth.com. Been visiting here today with Stephen Cups at Ellipsis Health. Stephen, appreciate you being with us today. Thank you.